best fall fragrances of 2024. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Mann. This is my channel Scented Moments where we discuss everything about fragrances. So in this video, I will share with you my favorite, the best in my opinion, fall fragrances for 2024. Um, and like always, I will mention f uh, six designers and six niche fragrances and this will be a ranked video. So I'll be ranking my designers in my niche. And fall is perfect to where start wearing our more warm spicy cozy sweet fragrances so it's a time where we switch up the fragrance rotation from fresh citrusy to more warm ambery spicy fragrances so let's get started with the list and first i will start with designer fragrances and coming in a number six spot this is from the house of yves saint laurent released in 1995 and this is just number six spot because i think it's now discontinued uh and hard to get um unfortunately because this for me is, was one of my favorites from this brand um and it is opium pour homme in the eau de parfum concentration absolutely love opium pour homme in the eau de parfum i also like the other toilet actually it's a bit more fresh um, but uh, I love the intensity and the bit of thickness of the Eau de Parfum. This is black currant, big dose of black currants, very spicy, gives like an aniseed uh, type of spice um, with some pepper and with tons of vanilla and amber. It's so good. Opium Porom is fantastic. It's really a great classic that unfortunately didn't do the test of time because it was discontinued but it was recently discontinued i believe like a couple of years ago i would say or a year ago um unfortunately again i think it's a fantastic scent very gentlemanly very unique um well it's when it it's in the time where Yves Saint Laurent mattered in terms of uh, fragrances now i mean Yves Saint Laurent, it's just another brand that for me, it doesn't I don't resonate with the brand as it currently stands. I don't enjoy really their Y line nor myself. I mean, it's just all fresh blue shower gel type of fragrances that I really do not um, appreciate that much. The best blue fragrance is Bloody Chanel, and that's it. In the other parfum, especially. But well, that's a, another topic. But yes, Opium pour Homme, Eau de Parfum. If you can find uh, a bottle. And if this is in your genre, this spicy, vanillic, fruity uh, type of fragrance, I think you can really go and purchase this one. Because again, it's I think it's hard to find. But uh, but yes, that's why just number six, Opium pour Homme by Yves Saint Laurent, uh, the Eau de Parfum concentration. Coming in number five spot, this is from the house of Cartier and it is Déclaration Parfum very underrated released in 2018 uh the nose behind this one is Mathilde Laurent uh which I, I I think she I think she's the in-house perfumer of Cartier or at least she has she has done a lot of fragrances for Cartier um and uh, Déclaration Parfum is a fantastic take on the original um it's more it's a leathery take on the original so you have the cardamom you still have a bit of a cumin not as intense as in the original i would say it's more amped up in a cardamom you have still a light fresh bergamot here with leather and it's amazing leather and some woods you know it's like cedar wood it's amazing very gentlemanly very elegant a bit mature but it's to die for the longevity is good it's okay i mean it's in a six to seven hour mark for parfum i would like that this would last more uh, and to be a bit more beefy but in the end i mean let's not forget declaration was originally created by jean-claude elena and uh, it's it's heavily inspired by uh, eau d'hermes by hermes because the perfumer of eau d'hermes Edmund Rudnitska was the mentor of Jean-Claude Elena. So it has that transparency, a spicy, slightly animalic qualities that usually Jean-Claude Elena fragrances have. And um, and so they, they still kept that, uh, that DNA. Uh, they just amped up and add more depth with leather. But in the end, it's very elegant. Um, 
absolutely love it it's perfect for fall uh, i mean and i love the color of the liquid also check this one out guys very slept on designer declaration parfum by cartier and talking about Hermes, we have a fragrance from Hermes. This one released in 1998, uh, created by Jean-Claude Elena, but also in collaboration with two other perfumers, uh, Gilles Romé and Bernard Bourgeois. Uh, and this one is Rocabar. I love Rocabar. Rocabar fits full like a glove uh this creams fall this is very woodsy very piney very foresty and a bit leathery it's dry it has some juniper in here as well it has a bit of a juniper berry feel but it's not like overly fruity nor sweet just gives a bit of a fruity nuance but overall it's a very dry woodsy leathery fragrance very elegant another elegant fragrance a bit mysterious i would say slightly smoky it's to die for it literally smells like an autumn day an amazing uh sunny autumn day oh, love it love it love it uh Hokabar by hermes the performance it's okay i mean it's not something that will shout from your skin but um it's an older toilet so uh it's it's average it has an average performance but it's very unique again very slept on it's another fragrance that it slept on highly advised for you to check this one out is Hokabar by Hermes the next fragrance coming in the number three spot from the house of Dior Dior Homme Intense almost a classic almost a classic and uh, this is a fragrance that I will always have in my collection. I, I mean, I love the Dior Homme line. I think it's a masterpiece of a line, uh, especially the Dior Homme, Dior Homme Intense and Dior Homme Parfum. I mean, these three are amazing. Uh, and I also like the Dior Homme Sport, not the current version though. I much prefer the 2012, which is a version that I have um, in the two, in the in the 2008 version also was amazing. Um, also, you have Jerome Cologne, which is a more lemony fragrance. It wasn't always the case because Jerome Cologne was initially released and created by Francis Courtin, actually in 2007, and it was very different from now. It was literally a Cologne version of the original Jerome. Then the GR reformulated uh, in the early 2010s into the what now we know as the Arom Cologne, like this lemony, fresh type of scent. Uh, but yes, this just to say that the Arom, the Arom line in general is amazing, aside the 2020. Um, this one fits full like a glove also. But this is, unlike the previous fragrances that I mentioned, this one goes in a more sweet, sensual, mysterious uh, direction with iris, of course, but also with cacao, with vanilla, with suede, with uh, musk. It's just to die for. And actually, I do prefer this version to the previous one. The previous version of Dior Intense was very makeup-y, too makeup-y even for me. Um, and here they really balanced. I think it's really the perfect balance between Dior Homme and Dior Parfum. Love it. Love the work that they did here. And it's also a bit more woodsy uh, in the base. Very sexy. I absolutely love this one. Best in this genre is Dior Homme Intense. The next fragrance, it's from the House of Chanel, but just from the less exclusives. And it is 31 Rue Cambon. And this is in the Eau de Parfum concentration. This is a Chypre fragrance and it screams fall. Um, this one, I could also mention Sycamore actually, but I really want to wear this one more because I just purchased this one. It was at the beginning of the year and I didn't wear it that much. And I think this one shines more during the fall season. Uh, spring and fall, I would say, but more in the fall. I really want to wear this uh, often during the fall time. Um, and it's great. I mean, from the minor, the few experiences that I have with the 31 Rue Cambon is that this is a tremendous Chypre fragrance. It's a type of fragrance that you use to go to opera. It's a very elegant, um, borderline formal and serious fragrance. This, in the end, 
it has citruses on top like bergamot uh, and a bit of pepper then you have the rose the lang ylang with some patchouli a bit mossy as well I, I doubt that this has like real oak moss but it has like a mossy effect here to my nose um, and also a bit ambery love love this one this is fantastic also one of the best chypres out there one of the references for chypres and uh, yes i really can't wait to wear this more often during the fall season it's 31 Rucambo by chanel and in a number one spot i have two fragrances both from garland but one it's from their mainstream collection and the other one is from their exclusive la relamatie uh, so from the mainstream line, uh, this was released this year and I absolutely love it. I already dedicated a video for this fragrance, uh, for this one and the other two. So this one is L'Omédial Parfum. L'Omédial Parfum is fantastic. If you are a fan of the original L'Omédial or if you are a fan of the line in general, you need to try this one. Uh, I'm a fan of the this DNA, uh, and yeah, th this was a love at first sniff. I think it's a fantastic release. It's really a more intensified version of the original, M more boozy, more boozy, a bit more suede. You have a, still the almonds and the tonka beans. Uh, it's amazing. I love this one this creams fall this is so good for date night this creams date nights all over it's very sensual um and uh very addicting as well love it and it, it, it's unique i find this line to be very unique it's you don't smell this type of dna in any other designer brands it's all about either bubbly sweet or just that shower gel type of uh, scent character so here it's it's really unique. You have the almonds, you have the, the boozy amaretto here with tonka beans, with suede, a bit of a patchouli as well to give more depth and more earthy uh, qualities. Great longevity also, great longevity. After all, this is a parfum, the longevity actually is quite good. So yes, I highly advise you to try this one out. And uh, like I said, I dedicated a video where I talk about L'Omédial Parfum, Arbe Rouge Parfum and Vediver Parfum. So, but for the, especially for the fall season, check this one out, L'Omédial Parfum. And from the La Relamatie collection, Bois d'Armenie. Bois d'Armenie is, it's, it's a, a darling, uh, and I have already a long story with this one because I had this one forever on my wish list, and um, I first ordered this one uh, from a website um, and um, never came actually I was able to um, recover the the money that I paid but um, but then like a few months later I was able to scoop up this bottle which I it will actually happen this year and I'm really really happy for to have a 200 ml of Bois d'Armenie especially because I already heard there is a rumor I don't know if that's true or not but I think this will be discontinued unfortunately um tonka imperial is already discontinued which was one of my fa it's my favorite tonka bean centered fragrance discontinued uh french lavande also discontinued and um and this one i think it will also get the axe um unfortunately this is a fantastic scent this creams fall also this is all about benzoin uh, this was i think this was created by francis courtier actually and um this wanted to recreate to represent the traditional armenian paper so this one is a bit dusty and it has this old library feel into it uh with tons tons of benzoin a bit incensey and vanillic and a bit spicy as well i would say absolutely glorious uh this this cream's fall it's very sensual i would say very sensual very mysterious very unique so I really advise you to give this one a try because it's rumored to be discontinued. Uh, I don't know if it's, it will be official or not, but, uh, but well, definitely get your nose on, on this one because even if it's not discontinued, it's really worth a try. Um, so yes, Bois d'Armenie and uh, L'Omédial Parfum as my number one, let's say, 
uh, in this designer list for the fall season of 2024. Now let's talk about the niche fragrances. Coming in number six spot, and this was very hard to rank because I love every each of these niche fragrances. Any of these could be number one easily, but well, for this video, it will be the number six spot from the house of Francesca Bianchi, Byzantine Amber. This was released last year, fantastic creation from Francesca Bianchi. Uh, and this was missing, this type of amber was missing in her collection. So this is amber, of course, very thick, resinous, sweet labdanum with tons of animalic nuances, styrax, a bit of castorium in here with some iris, like a butchery iris. It's to die for. I love this one. Yeah, very animal, very pungent, a uh, bit incensey as well. Love it. Um, great performance. This is an extrait de parfum. And ambers work wonderfully during the fall time. Fall and winter, of course. Um, but uh, yes, this one is an exceptional amber fragrance from Francesca Bianchi in the number six spot. Coming in number five spot, this is from the house of Indult Isvaraya. Love, love this one. This is patchouli and plum. Tons of plum in here. I would say that this is more plum forward, very juicy, jammy plum with some earthy patchouli in the base. Man, I love it. And a bit spicy as well, um, but um, but I love the plum in here. Very, very sensual, very edible also. I love it. This is very underrated. Uh, if you are a person who loves plum, um, if you love pl uh, Plum Japonais by Tom Ford, again, not saying that this is like Plum Japonais. No, it's very different. But if you are missing like a, a plum centric fragrance, check this one out. And it's not playful. This has a darkness into it, maybe because of this earthy patchouli. I mean, it's amazing. Absolutely love this one. Uh, fits fall to perfection, I would say. It's Isvaraya by Indult. Coming in the number four spot, this is from the house of Les Eaux Primordiales and it is Venice Supermassive. I already talked about this fragrance, I already did a review. Um, this fragrance was released last year and uh, of course, like the name implies, this is a big dose of vanilla with caramel, with amber, with some spices. Very warm, very cozy, but very potent at the same time. This fragrance is an extrait. You need to go easy on the trigger here. Um, I wore this one actually last week and uh, I would say that my fiance was a bit overwhelmed. This fragrance kept projecting even though I went nose blind. Uh, actually, then I stopped noticing this fragrance, but my fiance was saying like, no, this fragrance is it's there like everywhere you you go if you're moving some if you're moving one arm or whatever like you're doing one movement i get a whiff of that fragrance it's this potent so definitely go easy on the trigger but it's an amazing vanilla fragrance not the best but it's definitely solid top five uh so great quality vanilla uh again a caramelized spicy ambery vanilla it's to die for Great vanilla fragrance here, Venice Supermassive by Les Eaux Primordiales in number four spot. Coming in number three spot, this is from House of Rubini and it is Tambour Sacré. Absolutely love this one. This is so underrated, just like the entire House of Rubini. But I genuinely believe that this house will explode in popularity sooner than later because his fragrances, the fragrances of Andrea Rubini are unique high quality and have everything to succeed. Tambour Sacré, I discovered this fragrance also last year at Essence. It's basically an orangey, uh, spicy with cardamom, with coffee, tons of coffee in here, with resins. I have also a bit of a jasmine in here, but what I do get the most is coffee with resins like myrrh, opopanax and frankincense. Uh, that gives a very autumnal feel into it. Love it. High quality coffee right here. One of the best, if not the best that I smelled. Um, it's fantastic. Great performance. Man, this is so good. So, so good. Highly advise you to check this one out. Tambou Sacré by Rubini and the number three spot. Coming in the number two spot from the house of Frédéric Mal. 
Monsieur. The patchouli bomb. It's a heavy dose of patchouli, very earthy and medicinal, uh, very oily uh, with rum. So it has a booziness in here with uh, spices. So, so good. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, patchouli fragrances. This was love at first sniff when I tried it, I mean, a few years ago, and I'm very happy to finally have it in my collection. Uh, some say that this is like the masculine version of Portrait of a Lady, but Portrait of a Lady, despite the name, is masculine enough already. So in the end, if you love patchouli, I mean, you really need to check this one out. Amazing for fall, very gentlemanly, very potent. Um, you need to go easy on the trigger here. And... Um, and yeah, it's a patchouli lover's dream come true. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Monsieur by Frédéric Mal in the number two spot. And in my number one, from the house of Thomas de Monaco, it is Fuego Futuro. Now, during the summertime, I talked a lot, non-stop, about Sol Salgado. I absolutely love Sol Salgado. And from now on, I will be talking about Fuego Futuro more. Um, I love these two releases from Thomas and Monaco. These two were released last year, but I just discovered them this year. And I just uh, added them to my collection this year as well, um, in June, when I was in Portugal, actually. And uh, Fuego Futuro screams fall. It's like a smoky, spicy, woodsy fragrance. So here you have a very unique note, Mate Absolute with uh, clary sage, Sichuan pepper, you, then you have like smoked sage sage with uh, some incense, uh, with some resins, it's amazing, to die for. Uh, it's, it's a fragrance that uh, smells like fall, it's, it's a bit like herbal, vegetal-like, smoky, spicy, woody, it's so unique, and again, it screams fall. Screams fall, great performance. At least, I mean, great performance during the couple of times that I wore it. I just wore this one really a couple of times because it was hot uh, when I purchased it. We were in the in, during the summertime, and uh, and the wearing experience was amazing. So I'm very curious to see how this will behave during the fall time. In scent profile, for me, it's fall and winter, especially fall. And uh, and yes, I'm just curious to see how this will perform in the colder days. But I do believe this will last. This is a parfum. Um, and uh, I really do believe that it will last. Scent-wise, though, amazing scent. I really advise to check this one out. Very unique. Uh, it screams fall. Fuego Futuro by Thomas de Monaco. Finishing this video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me in the comments down below what are your full fragrances uh, for 2024. And see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Ciao.